all of you have seen the title of my talk. The title of my talk is uh, Integrating Yoga Therapy with the Western Medicine. It's the reason for it, because all of you who are finishing your studies, we will know very soon, once you're in uh, you know, practice, whether it is a healthcare setup or academic setup, whatever setup you're in, you'll see every person comes to you, new person. I will say uh, 75 to 80% will come for some health reason. And the reason is the word is out. Word is out that yoga as a therapy is very beneficial to our chronic lifestyle related disorders. Now I'm to go over with you slowly and slowly, what is yoga therapy? how we can integrate, and what are the evidences today, just to show it to you, that uh, it is a, already a part of our Western medicine, or we call it a modern medicine, or called the allopathic medicine. Okay, let me start sharing the slides with you. So we will see. Here it is. Let me share. Okay. Do you guys see it well, Jessica? <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> here's the title Integrating Yoga Therapy in the Western Medicine. So <sighs> this picture, let me see, here it is. This picture tells you all, huh? Somebody sent in this picture to me and I love this picture. This is integrating application of medical yoga in a health care. Now, all of you know of what yoga is and all of you know where it comes from. Just to give you just a brief introduction to other people who are on the Facebook Live, that the yoga is the anglicized version of the root word is called yoga. The yoga means union. We call it union of a body, mind, and spirit. It is a spiritual practice for self-realization. It's a union between your individual soul and the supreme soul. And the health benefits were just an outcome of this, your practices. So if you look at it as a modern world in the computer, you can understand our body is like a hardware, mind is a software and spirit is a program. Who's a programmer? I'm the programmer. I program my software, my mind, and the hardware get fixed. So it's as simple as it is, the yoga fixes your software. Yoga basically is, a, we call it a software updates. You have this iPhone, you know, you get these software updates. So when our software, has a glitch, yoga takes care of it. It is a philosophy called Yoga Sutra Patanjali, 196 sutras. And interesting is how 193 of them are basically to quiet down your mind, called Chitto Vritti Niroda. Practice is called Eight Limbs of Yoga, or Patanjali Ashtangi Yoga, is the eight limbs. You, all of you know very well. Yam is a social restraint, there are five of them, Niyam, personal restraint. Asana, generally, we mention it as an external and internal alignment. And I'll explain to you a little bit more how it happens with the relaxation response. Pranayama is a voluntary regulated breathing. Pratahara, pratahara means prata means reject. Ahara means input. So the withdrawal of your control of your five senses. Focus, dharana, dhyana, and meditation. Meditation is the state which creates the pharmacological effect. At the state of meditation, our mind produces every medication you can think about, which is called, we call it a meditation is medication. And if you look at the side by side, meditation and medication, there is a difference only one letter. Meditation has a T, medication has a C. So you said T, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's a choice, you know, T is for transformation, 
Meditation is transformation, sees your choice. And Samadhi is finally the union of your body, mind and spirit. So what you, you, yoga therapy means, yoga therapy means an adaptation of these practices based on the patient's or client's clinical condition. What does it mean? We do not use any unusual thing for the therapy. We're using the same Yoga Sutra Patanjali or using same Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, but we learn how to use them or combine them and do it in a, in a gradual process. And I'm going to show it to you that a patient comes to you, how do you incorporate yoga therapy in your Western medical practice? Primarily, it's a relaxation response and activation of parasympathetic tone. What does it mean? That our whole chronic lifestyle related disorders are due to stress, which is a, a sympathetic overdrive. And this is totally counteracting it for parasympathetic tone. It is also introspection, looking inside yourself. And as simple as it is, say it is called a, called a neuroplasticity. That is called, if you do keep on doing a repeated, repeated action, it takes about 20, 30, 40 inputs and the brain gets the signal. So introspection means today you cannot touch your toe. But if you keep on practicing one day, you will touch your toe. The moment you can touch your toe, you said, hey, let me see what happened to me. How is my digestion? How is my sleep? Totally changes your perception with wellness. So I said, there is no problem in the world, does not have a solution. Just no disease, everyday treatment, just awaken the doctor with it. Very, very important. People come and say, my doctor tells me this. And I said, no, you have a doctor within you. Listen to that. We must make our body work for us. Very, very important. You see people say, I want to meditate. Meditation is the seventh limb of yoga. There is nothing called yoga and meditation. This is a practice. You have to prepare your body in a relaxation response, prepare your breath so you can enter into a state of meditation. Nothing has the greatest power but self. It is the art of self-healing. And finally, at the end, you will know that I am the cause and I'm the cure. Our father of a modern medicine, Hippocrates says, I'm more important to know what sort of person has the disease, not to know what sort of disease a person has. It is as simple as yoga therapy. I'm not interested about your disease. I'm interested about you as a whole. It is a holistic practice you know, reductionist, Western medicine reductionist practice. This is a part of the new branch of medicine is called integrative medicine. About 15 years back, about three out of 125 medical school has it. Today, you have about 100 medical school has a department of integrative, integrative medicine. 65, the program has a clinical clerkship. 25 training program who trains you for integrative medicine. And in 2014, the American board has established American Board of Integrative Medicine. But most important thing, listen to this one, how we have in integrated yoga therapy in Western medicine. The Academic Consortium for Integrative Medicine and Health developed a definition. And look at the definition which is very important from Western standpoint. It is a relationship between practitioner and the patient. So it is called patient-centered medicine. And Western medicine is called a physician-centered medicine. Focuses on the whole person, looking beyond the body in mind to achieve optimal health and healing. What it basically does, it unblocks your internal healing power. Western medicine is called evidence-based medicine. Show me, show me the number, show me the, you know, your PubMed articles. Yoga therapy is called a practice-based evidence. You know, you know, in Sanskrit, people don't know, it's a karo yog, raho nirog. Keep practicing it, it is a 99% practice. Generally, when I present, 
I generally don't present with the slides. I generally do all the practice and keep going. So people who doesn't believe what the potential of yoga therapy, this is a positive proof of global warming. Most important part of the yoga therapy is it is an individual practice. It is experiential. You are the creator of your own destiny. It is a transcendental science. That means it's beyond science. Means we can explain things in a Western medicine, explain through science, but some of them we cannot explain it. That is we call it's a beyond science. That's what we call a philosophy, and it's experimental. What the experimental means, by the time you keep on practicing, you develop the neuroplasticity and it becomes your own individual personal practice. So how to integrate yoga is a lifestyle. It is an art and science of healthy living. And the day has almost come. The Western physician is going to write a prescription so yoga therapy for chronic low back pain, metabolic syndrome, cancer. I'll be showing you primarily from the, your established clinical medical journals, not the research articles, because our physician wants to see your clinical journals, all the publications, how yoga therapy got integrated in Western medicine. So he's uh, almost the father of our in incorporating yoga as a therapy in Western medicine, Dr. Dean Ornish. He started, he has been actually had a yoga training in Yogaville under Swami Sachitanand. And he has established this program. It used to call a spectrum. Now it's called intensive cardiac rehabilitation. And many hospitals, including mine has the program and it is now covered by Medicare and other health insurances. Always remember when a patient comes to you, you know, a doctor sends to you as a yoga therapist, it's called an art of transformation, which means not to master the asanas, but use the asanas in stages for transformation and therapeutic benefits. So, a yoga therapy means a practice that meets you where you are. See, you have physical ailment. You come with a knee pain. You come with a back pain. We meet you there for a physical therapy or with the idea of how to incorporate yoga therapy for this patient. A patient comes with a respiratory problem, asthma, COPD pulmonary fibrosis, we'll think that comes with the neuropsychiatric disorder. It's a stage approach that teaches a pain-free asana. That means when a person says, and I cannot even sit down and you are just fine, sit in a chair. As Jessica was saying at the beginning, keep your spine straight. The moment you keep your spine straight, a relaxation response sets in. By the time you have a relaxed muscles of respiration, your breathing gets effortless. And when your body is in relaxation response and breathing is effortless, your lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. And we have a 4.5 liter of vital capacity, which you exchange. But you only breathe about 0.5 liter. So you learn how to breathe out, breathing out longer than breathing in. And slowly and slowly you enter into the state of meditation. It builds a physical and mental resilience. So when I present this, you know, we teach our physicians, the yoga therapy, the how to integrate in Western medicine through a continuing medical education program. And we are the one which first started, me, Sadbir, and uh, Rajan. And the program is approved by called SCCME, Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education for Physicians, who are doing for about the 10 years. Physician always comes and asks, what is the relaxation response? So this is an example of relaxation response. You start able to sit down in a sukhasana. Remember, if you have a pain, and that's for doing a practice pain, back off. Find the place where you have a little bit of discomfort. We call it comfortable discomfort. 
And if you stay in this posture for a longer time, it varies from person to person, but a neuroplasticity sets in. Neuroplasticity sets in, you can get into the next, it's called your siddhasan. You can put your one foot in the top, next siddhasan comes, you can get an orthopadmasan, half lotus, then you can get a full lotus. And remember, people will say, look at that lotus. This lotus, padmasan is a pure, relaxation response. If you are not able to get into that if you want to try. And most important thing about asana practice is a let go. We say, we say we, you know, exercise, we say work out. Yoga practice is called work in. You know, difference between a exercise and a yoga. Exercise is a sympathetic overdrive. Exercise is a Muscle contraction, exercise increases your heart rate, your blood pressure, respiratory rate. It is called a sympathetic overdrive. But you get a sympathetic overdrive, our body starts to do what is called your homeostasis. So a parasympathetic activation starts. So what we do after exercise, we count our resting pulse rate. Resting pulse rate coming down, he said, oh, this is a very nice effect of exercise. Yoga therapy primarily activates your parasympathetic tone without going to the sympathetic overdrive. Because what happens in sympathetic overdrive, a lot of people in sympathetic overdrive will have a, a cardiac event. A person who is doing a, a pushing a, you know, 200 pounds, 300 pounds in a YMC get a heart attack. A person running without paying attention. The most important attention is your breath. It's called annamaya kosha to pranamaya kosha. Anything you do behind your breath is not going to hurt you. So we say today in Western medicine, this relaxation response is called your preventive medicine. And I'll show it to you how the yoga therapy acts as a primary prevention, secondary prevention, and a tertiary prevention. The yoga as a therapy was the a research was going on in our Western medicine. But the first person who literally we know from our, at least historically, is the Swami Rama. When Swami Rama came, so what happens to the yogis by the time they keep on practicing the relaxation response, they develop a phenomena by which they have a control over the autonomic nervous system. Normally we don't. We have a control of our your voluntary nervous system, a partial about involuntary nervous system, but autonomic nervous system, I'm sleeping, I'm still breathing, my heart rate is functioning. So, so he said, I can stop my heart. So he'd been hooked up. Yes, he could literally stop his heart, but he developed atrial fibrillation. But what is the most important thing selectively in the hand, we have two arteries, radial and ulnar artery, he could selectively shut down the one of the blood vessels for the hand perfusion. Next is our Herbert Benson. He's still here in Harvard. He was a follower of our Transcendental Meditation. And when he joined us, Transcendental Meditation, he noticed that at the deep level of Transcendental Meditation, there's a lot of physiological changes. Heart rate comes down, blood pressure comes down. So at the time, he knew that this is the effect of meditation, which is the seventh limb of yoga. But that time in 1967 or 69, I think he was very uncomfortable to use the word meditation. So he wrote the book called The Relaxation Response, which essentially became a, one of the, your New York Times bestseller. But if you read the book, it's nothing but your effect of meditation, physiological effect of meditation in the body. He kept on publishing. And recently he published, you know, he called relaxation response and showed that it has a effect on genetic expression. It has an effect on your apoptosis. It has an effect on baroreceptor sensitivity, chemoreceptor sensitivity. And I'll show it to you a little bit more there. So this is the integration of yoga therapy in Western medicine. And Herbert Benson, still in the Harvard, 
This is an article published in New England Journal of Medicine. New England Journal of Medicine today is the Bible of our modern medicine. And in the April 9th, this last year, there's an article. This is called the New Era in a Mind-Body Medicine. I'm not going over this article because I, you can always find the article just to show you. When you have an article published in New England Journal of Medicine, that means we are here to stay. This is just a, a simple uh, a survey in showing that about 36.7 million people are practicing yoga, a $16 billion industry. We know all about it, but we're talking about therapeutic benefits. Now, for the physicians or healthcare providers, they go and search for a PubMed. The PubMed is the US National Library of Medicine. So if you put in the search engine yoga therapy, you will get over 6,000 articles. Remember, the PubMed is an all PubMed index journal. And in their your clinical trials, like NIH funded research is almost about 500 studies being funded by National Institute of Health. What they have, they have separated you now in West yoga and meditation, they call yoga and meditation. But you know, yoga is meditation, it's a seventh limb. But if you put a meditation, you'll get another 7,000 articles. You put a meditation, get another over 450 NIH grant funding. The first evidence we have today that how is incorporating yoga therapy in Western medicine, this was published in Lancet, one of the very prestigious medical journal. It was in 1973 the yoga and biofeedback in the management of hypertension. That's actually, we can go back and see, this is one of the first publication in an established medical journal. But the most important thing, this author, Dr. Mr. Dr. C. Patel, he went and did a yoga and biofeedback in the standard Western medical term called randomized control study. And he showed the relaxation response reduces peripheral resistance and reduces the blood pressure. Another landmark article, which comes from our SBASA, which is a primary institution or mother institution of our Vayu, is from the Nagendra, is a yoga for bronchial asthma. It was published in British Medical Journal in 1985. I can trace back, this is in 1998, there was an article published in JAMA. Remember, these are the established clinical medical journal which the Western trained physicians are looking at yoga therapy for carpal tunnel. This was an article, a landmark article. It's called comparing yoga and exercise and self-care, a chronic back pain, we call it Karen Sherman. It was 2005. I still remember the day, the day it was published. It was Annals of Internal Medicine. It's another Bible of Western medicine. Karen Sherman was being interviewed by CNN, ABC, you know, CBS, NBC, every article, front page of, I think it was in Wall Street Journal or New York Times. But I'm showing you the established the spine, very respected medical journal, has an article published, Yoga for Low Back Pain. I'm giving you this information because for you to get an idea where we are in yoga therapy. When you get an article published in a prestigious journal like this, you know, we are here to stay. The Yoga for Chronic Low Back Pain, but again, it's article published in Archives of Internal Medicine. It's again, Yoga for Chronic Low Back Pain. It's Annals of Internal Medicine. Wonderful journal. Look at this. Journal of American College of Cardiology, the most prestigious journal in Western medicine, published yoga therapy for atrial fibrillation in 2013, almost eight years back. I know if, you, if I go over this article, there's a lot of flaws in the article, but publishing it in the Jack is more important. They publish, this is called Journal of American Heart Association. You know, cannot have any better, better journal this. Meditation in cardiovascular risk reduction, scientific statement from American Heart Association. When American Heart Association talks, people listen because I was, I was the president of the local chapter, so I know all about it. Again, Journal of American College of Cardiology, 
It came in the last year, April of 2020, yoga-based cardiac rehabilitation after acute myocardial infarction. It is a multi-center study. Look at all over the world, the authors are publishing. So, you know, when Sadbir Khalsa talks about it as a research, you know, he goes about every article, bye bye. I'm just showing it to you where we are today. This is a from the grant from the National Cancer Institute, have won the largest grant to MD Anderson Hospital. And Lorenzo Cohen, who is also, I think, part of your program, and he did a yoga uh, for the breast cancer. He published the, the research with the SBASA and finally published this in a, another prestigious journal, Journal of Clinical Oncology. In the same time, it was an interesting, there's another article got published is a yoga therapy for breast cancer on the same journal in three months apart. So you really don't see it that often. In this, that a prestigious journal to have a two identical papers published from two different institutions. And that gives you credibility of how yoga therapy is helpful in Western medicine. This is an interesting one. Again, it published in Archives of Internal Medicine is called the, when the conventional medical providers recommend unconventional medicine. This is very interesting. This is uh, from your, uh, <clears throat> from Nimhans in India. This is one of the prime institution in India. It's a Gangadhar. He was showing the functional MRI of Om chanting. So when you do Om chanting, you have a frequency. Our brain has a frequency. When the two frequency text together, it collides. It's called your harmonic resonance. It's a physics and it quiets down your mind. This is in University of Virginia. They started a foundation, Medical Yoga for Health Professional. And I was the one who was, uh, they asked me. So I went and trained the people who are starting the program. In fact, they came to our continuing medical education program. This is you. This is, I, I, always, I always talk about uh, Vayu to all my presentations and how, and how far and how long it takes to establish the credibility here in the United States. In the new medical school, there's a brand new medical school in Michigan. It's called their Oakland University, Beaumont. They have a completely separate department, Beaumont, Beaumont School of Yoga Therapy, and all the medical students and the resident rotates. The lady who's in charge is a good friend of mine. She's a yoga therapist. This is a master of science in yoga therapy in Maryland University of Integrative Health. They started in 2013. I remember the first one, one of, one of my actually, um, somebody is coming to my class, her daughter, but everybody who finishes there gets a job. That is the most important information you need to carry. By the time you finish the program, you will have a job. This is a program in you know, Loyola Marymount University in the yoga therapy program, they go to a medical cert clinic for their study. So how yoga therapy works from Western medical concept is called psychoneuroendocrinology. What is psychoneuroendocrinology means this relaxation response, it affects the area of the brain, which is above your motor and sensory cortex called a limbic system. There are two nuclei called amygdala and hippocampus and the response to your fear and memory, then it's a signal to you, your called body homeostasis called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary gland through pituitary adrenal axis, and also it sends a signal to your autonomic nervous system to have a parasympathetic activation. So I'm going to give you these slides. I'm not going to go over with this, but just to tell you you can look at the research papers. It controls epigenetics. Epigenetics is the one which prevents or your genetic expression. Remember, genetic changes doesn't cause disease called genetic expression. It reduces all the inflammatory response from the gene. It acts like an antioxidant. It controls apoptosis, controls telomere length. We've got a Nobel Prize. And I can go on and on and on, but I teach them for a, a long time for the physicians, the effect of it, but for you, it's just the informations only. Look at this. 
Inhalation is sympathetic, exhalation is parasympathetic. So it teach you how to do a longer exhalation than inhalation. It is called aerobic glycolysis. Like when you have a more oxygen, the glucose combines with oxygen from carbon dioxide, water, and then called ATP. It is an energy called adenosine triphosphate. But if you don't have enough oxygen, called anaerobic glycolysis, glucose combines with oxygen from lactic acid, pyruvic acid, pain producing substances. So you said the Bastrika Pranayama. So if you have a knee pain, back pain, we put them in a little relaxation response and let them do a Bastrika Pranayama. We use all this, like we'll do a, call a yeah, Paschim Namaskar. We put a hands in the back, it's called a chest expansion. It improves your ejection fraction improves your pulmonary function, then we'll do a called a Brahma Mudra, relaxation of the neck, Paschim Namaskar, Brahma Mudra, and during your breathing out, we do a Brahmri Pranayam, like a bumblebee breathing, and that frequency has the same frequency as the brain. So maybe I'll do one practice session with you and, and, and show it to you. It increases vagal tone, increases baroreceptor sensitivity, and I will show you a little bit later I'll talk maybe next uh, 15 more minutes before I take a question for you. When you put your head down and I'll show it to you what the inversion poses cost to you. It increases heart rate variability. See, it's not the heart rate. Right? Both the heart has a heart rate of around 49, but this is called heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is a function of the parasympathetic tone. And the same heart rate this is the function of a sympathetic tone. And how it is incorporated is called primary prevention. Suppose you have the genetic predisposition. My father has a hypertension, diabetes. If I incorporate relaxation response, it causes genetic suppression, prevents the onset of the disease. And how do you find it out? Yeah, somebody has a hypertension, they have two children. One gets the hypertension at the age of 30 and the age of 60. Why? That is the most important thing. Cleveland Clinic, one of the pioneer institutions in this country, incorporated yoga therapy in their Lifestyle 180 program. This is a beautiful article in the Time Magazine, how not to end up here. That means yoga therapy is a preventive medicine, primary prevention. This is a program in Cleveland Clinic. They have about 10 yoga classes daily. And this is the very fundamental, this very important in, in the Cleveland Clinic. It's a Rosen, his title is a chief wellness officer. So how far you come to the yoga therapy? Secondary prevention. Now you have the disease. You have a heart attack, you have a cancer of the breast, you have all lifestyle disorders, and it all happened through your lifestyle. So when you have the disease, you get your usual and customary therapy, that is called integration. Integrative medicine is integration of the science of Western medicine with the, your philosophy and wisdom of the yoga therapy. But when you incorporate the yoga therapy, you get a genetic suppression, prevents the progression and the reversal of the disease. It happened to me. I had open heart surgery about 20 years back, but I'm totally a disease-free, medication-free, enjoying a good quality life. In a tertiary prevention, it prevents the complication of the disease, like a diabetes, diabetic nephropathy, kidney, diabetic retinopathy. It prevents your tertiary prevention. It's a wonderful tool for rehabilitation. In If you keep on doing the yoga therapy for chronic lifestyle-related disorders, you have a better management of the disease. People like us, you know, we have had the underlying condition, but now we wake up first thing in the morning, we enjoy a good quality yogic life. We do morning ushapan, we do neti pad, we do a morning practice, and most important, the less pharmaceutical support. That means you don't, you don't need too much medication. They were taking medication for diabetes, medication for hypertension. Your doctor will slowly start reducing it because you look better and better, and a better quality of life. And at the end of the day, we're seeing that by the prolonged genetic suppression, we get almost a cure of some chronic diseases, 
like a hypertension, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. Same thing happened for your, all the cancers, you know? The cancer is called oncogen. I have the oncogen within me, but oncogen has to express. It expresses through a phenomena called epigenetics, and yoga therapy controls that epigenetics. This is my book, and it is a very popular now. It's called Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda, and Western Medicine. But most important thing, if you see, there's a picture of Albert Einstein and Rabindranath Tagore, a scientist and a philosopher. When science meets philosophy, this is integrative medicine. Very, very important concept from Western medical standpoint. My book has all the standard publication, like, a, you know, there are the 25 book references. This is all your Western medical books. There are DVDs for the healthcare, and I also have a DVD. This, this is my DVD for my uh, yoga therapy for health and healing. But most important in my book, I have all your articles published and all from the journal reference from established medical journal. Just to show you how much books we have today, with my friend wrote you know, Yoga as a Medicine, Meditation as a med Medicine. This is a book called Yoga Therapy in Integrative Medicine. I wrote the foreword for the, for the book with the Dean Ornish. The Dean Ornish, and it is me. And this book is very popular. It's by Larry Payne. This is the book Charlie Tellis and Sadbir Khalsa, Lorenzo Cohen, and Timothy McCall wrote. This becomes a very research book, Principle and Practice of Yoga. Shirley Tellis, she's a world-renowned yoga researcher. She was in SVSA, started the SVSA research program. Now she's in Patanjali Yogpeet. She wrote the book, Research with Perspective on the Psychophysiology of Yoga. This is a new book. It's called the Handbook of Research on Evidence-Based Perspective on the Psychophysiology of Yoga and its Application. It's a very popular book, but it's available mostly to the researchers. This was one of my DVDs and early DVDs, which I used, but all my DVDs are basically for the healthcare providers with giving all the reasons, you know. This is my the new one, I just show it to you, but this is a primary for healthcare with all explanation. In fact, in my book, my book is for regular people, but it has all the Western medical explanation for our yogic and Vedic philosophy. The first evidence base, as I said, the uh, Dean Ornish, Dean Ornish first proven that a, a reversal of coronary artery disease, the heart disease, the coronary arteries get reversed. And here is the showing there was a more blockage and it's get unblocked. It is called macrophage function. Jessica knows what I'm talking about. When you start doing relaxation response, they call it endothelial function, endothelial relax and gets a better effect. This is the Dean Ornish's program. First it's called a spectrum program. But now it is called intensive cardiac rehabilitation. It is in a large number of medical centers, including my medical school. National Institute of Health has their own centers called NCCIH, National Center for Complementary Integrative Health. They have a whole section of the yoga therapy and their <clears throat> chief is a endocrinologist. In fact, we have our program called International Association of Yoga Therapy Sitter Program. She's one of our keynote speakers. This is a journal, International Journal of Yoga Therapy, and another called Yoga Therapy Today. This journal is a PubMed index journal. It's very important. And, and you know, you have a last speaker, I'm sure, Sadbir Khalsa was there. Sadbir Khalsa is editor. Yoga Therapy Harvard. There was a second international conference in the Harvard on integrative medicine, role of yoga and Ayurveda. So what I'm trying to show you to you, the acceptance of yoga therapy in Western medicine. This is our Benson Henry Institute, which is a Herbert Benson is there. And now is a Dr. Mehta is there, he's in charge. So I'm going to go over with a few patients, but generally I'm going to give you just brief, you know, actually this is me. And uh, I had an open heart, you know, triple vessel coronary bypass about in 2001. But now my, all the myocardial perfusion scans are normal. Here's a man, he came to me. Um, he had a, 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 a inoperable coronary artery disease. His ejection fraction was 10 to 20% and no, car, no people who operated him. 
So he came to my class. I said, sit down, do keep your spine straight, do a little breathing, and then we'll see. So slowly I taught him do a little pranayama, exhalation, longer than inhalation. And after a few months, he comes to my class and he's doing this, he's doing a bakasan. Then he's doing a, you know, almost like a plow, you know. So, so I said, you know, you need to go back to your doctor and see. Now he go back to a doctor. Now his ejection fraction is 40%. And which is told to almost totally unheard of, you know, in Western medicine. So what happens with the relaxation response, you get a better preload, more blood comes back to your heart and get a reduced afterload because your the peripheral resistance is down and that increases your cardiac output. Now he started saying, I want to do a headstand. Do I want to? And I ideally do not, I do not contraindicate anybody. What I tell them. Put your head down, you will feel miserable because your intracranial pressure is high up, your intraocular pressure is high up, intracarotid pressure high up. You cannot talk, you cannot breathe, but don't do anything. Keep it down. Keep your head down one day, two days, one week, two weeks, three weeks, depends on the person. Slowly and slowly, they get their adaptation. Intracranial pressure comes down, intraocular pressure comes down, and they can be able to breathe. So what happens when you have an imbalance in the physical body, you cannot breathe because it affects your annomaya kosha to pranomaya kosha. When you're gonna breathe, I said, don't touch anybody, don't do anything. See if you can go high up. This is a purely relaxation response and the physician will understand. So if you can look at this chart, all of that, even the blood chemistry, that gets better with the relaxation response. Why? Relaxation response is parasympathetic activation our whole digestive system is supplied by parasympathetic nerve. So now the food is now converted into a proper digestion called saptodhatu, rashodhatu, raktodhatu, mamshodhatu, medodhatu, ostidhatu, majjadhatu, shukradhatu. Then it forms a substance called ojas. But if you don't have enough parasympathetic activation, the food converts into high cholesterol, high uric acid. So let me go a little briefly, you know, we are running about maybe five more minutes. Let me show you a few more patients. This is a lady who came to me. She had a multiple school, she was in a wheelchair. She started doing it. One day she calls me, she said, come on, let me show you my license plate. Her license plate called transforming. I said, wow, Patricia, do you know? Yoga is called art of transformation. She was on a multiple medication for asthma. Within a short time, she got relief of it. This man had a Parkinson disease. And, you know, he had an interesting that he started the balancing poses. Parkinson disease, even is a do dopamine, but it is a tightness of the muscles and is a loss of balance. And he said, don't touch me, I will do it. Finally, he says, I want to learn a headstand. What I have. So he's doing head, headstand on his own. What happened in the headstand, he tells me that generally I have, when I get better, I still have a little bit of tremor in my hand in Parkinson's disease, but the history of my tremor goes away. So these are testimonial, it's very important. This man was a total cardiac cripple. He, he had a you know, surgery for your VSD, high, you know, malignant hypertension, surgery for your descending thoracic aneurysm. But anyway, nobody will touch him. But he started doing the balancing poses, mudras, chest opening poses, and look at his blood work. This is called activation of parasympathetic tone and relaxation response. Now he does all the balancing poses. is a wonderful outcome of yoga therapy. This is another fascinating yoga therapy example. This man had a cataract surgery. And in a cataract surgery, the surgeon says, and most of the stem, do not do a head step. His surgeon, who himself was yoga practitioner, he said, listen, you have been doing headstand all of your life. You have a develop the baroreceptor sensitivity. Nothing will happen to you. Here he is after six weeks in cataract surgery, he's going back. So coming back, all the contraindications, if you're pregnancy, you know, women says I'm in menstrual period, you know, don't start anything during your yes, change in the physiology, but you have been doing it before, we have absolutely no contraindication for doing it. This lady has a Parkinson disease and look at Parkinson patients doing this, almost unheard of unless you have a, a relaxation response. 
couple of more patients to show, and then I will take some questions and answers. This is fascinating. This you need to, need to hear about this story. Even give me extra few more minutes. This lady, she's a, a CPA and she had a stroke and she comes to the class, you know, she's just, you know, just all come down, closing her eyes, you know, I mean, as miserable as can be. I said, okay, sit down with your spine straight, do your little bit of a breathing, do little mudras and you will see the difference. Slowly and slowly, I just took her and I said, in stages, impossible become possible. He started coming to the class. Now you can see she's wearing some yoga outfit. Next thing says she comes, she puts a little bit of a makeup. And one day she comes, she comes with a colorful clothes. I said, Cecilia, I need to get some pictures of you. What I'm trying to say, when you feel good, you look good and you present yourself good. This is a wonderful outcome of yoga therapy. And these are a couple of research on the soul. The first article, it comes from Ekai Villadham, you know, in 1920s, Yoga Mimangsa. This is a Patanjali Yoga University. And this is the largest research center in Patanjali, now Patanjali Research Institute. 12 postdoc fellows are working under Charlie Tellis. These are all the, the things they do in the research work in Patanjali Yoga. They have everything. It's an evoke potential. I have been there. I've visited there so many times. They have a functional MRI. So everything we think about what yoga therapy can do, it's there. This is Svyasa. And you remember, you know, city, the whole administrative building looks like Aum. And uh, here is Charlie Tellis and me. And this is the research center of the SBSA. Arugudham, the hospital in SBSA. And also in the SBSA hospital, you have a cancer center. You have even ICU, intensive care unit. You know, one hospital is all run by the yoga therapy. Let me finish with this few slides called Origin of Yoga Therapy, where it came from. If you see, if you see a baby, everything they do is yoga. This is a, a, some pictures of the babies. Babies normally, naturally, they're in a Tadasana and Vrikasana. They sit down in Sukhasana, sit down in the Vajrasana, because they know there is some physiological changes which is good for them. Get up into the Cobra pose, Salabhasana, look at that. Actually, my, my grandson is almost a two. Sit down dog, down dog, I'm doing yoga. They do everything they do is yoga posture. Jatar Parivartanasan. Look at this. Upavistakunasan, Paschimuttanasan, Balasan. We just said, you know, we need to do a balasan. This is the way they sleep called Supta Baddha Kunasan. So people have insomnia. We tell them to sleep like this. No kasan. So this is my last slide, just to show it to you. That this was a slide you got from your, uh, from actually Dean Ornish. This is a uh, Swami Satchitanan. He was invited by University of Virginia, by uh, you know physicians. He got up. He wrote down illness and wellness. Then he circle I and circle we, and he said, "When you change, I to we." It's the end of my talk. So thank you again for letting me be part of your program. I'll be glad to answer all the questions. I cannot read all of them in the so Jessica, now it is your turn. You have the questions. I'll be glad to answer all of them. I hope it gives you a little bit of a flavor, you know? You call me, I can go, I can go segment by segment for your presentation, what to do in a Western medicine as a yoga therapy. Thank you, Dr. Sakar. Um, I just really want to take a moment for everyone to acknowledge just the breadth of information that you so gracefully covered in less than an hour. <laughs> you know, how to heal yourself, how all this knowledge is just out there, but how do we get it? We're so blessed to have the right source for this. Um, I that's <laughs> I just with your initial description and introduction of yoga is union. Um, and, you know, with so much information out there on the internet, especially, it's really important to have correct, authentic knowledge. 
And I personally feel blessed that I have parents that were able to guide me. They took your course for medical education for yoga, and that's how they guided me towards you. So I've been blessed towards towards you. And then in addition, my enrollment in Bayou was also a blessing because I only found out about it from your Facebook page days before the application was due. And it's amazing when you study yoga or Ayurveda and in helping yourself and helping others, there's such an immense transformation and it affects your life and the life of those around you. So um, there are a couple questions in the chat that are exactly the questions that I have for you <laughs> as well. Um, so there's one by Dr. Vedanthan from Colorado, and he was talking about having the privilege to publish work on asthma um, with yoga breathing techniques. And he, he comments that his results did not show a significant improvement of lung functions like um, FV1, FEV um, in the yoga group, but that the yoga group had a higher score of wellness. And so his overall take was that yoga produces a sensation of wellness in the presence of illness. No, 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 but, but there is a, something else also. We have a vast experience. Thank you for asking the question because we teach a class. We teach a class for yoga therapy, for pulmonary disease, yoga for cardiovascular disorders. You know, we do the same e courses. See, when you have a respiratory issue like asthma, COPD, or pulmonary fibrosis, you know, you are afraid to breathe. Remember, this is an onomaya kosha. You get a tightness of a bronchiole. Then what happens, you cannot breathe. And if you cannot breathe in pranomaya kosha, it becomes a monomaya kosha. You become very anxious, you know, you become restless. When you become a anxious and restless, it affects your viganomaya kosha. Now you cannot do any more judgment. Then it affects your anandamaya kosha. So essentially what happens that if you tell a person who has underlying respiratory problem to do a, your pranayama or a voluntary regulated breathing, they will be able to do it because the embedded fear within them. So what we teach them first is called relaxation of the, your voluntary respiratory muscles. The respiratory muscles are voluntary muscles. It can be trained. Like, you know, today you can do, say, you know, five pounds, you can do your arm press, but within a week you'll be able to do 10 pounds, then you can 20 pounds. Same way you breathe, okay? Lung is like a balloon. Slowly you breathe out, Okay, now we get a count of two in, count of four out. Slowly after three, two, three weeks, count of three in, count of six out. We are, we, we practice, we can do easily. Breathe out, count of 10 in, count of 20 out. So we really don't push them. In fact, we push the people with the respiratory problem, exactly the one you were saying, the wellness, just to sit down with the spine straight, eyes closed, do a dhyana mudra and just slowly breathe out first, slowly take a deep breath in and breathe out longer without any effort. We call it the effortless ease. It's a wonderful technique. You know, if you come, if you come to my class with a respiratory problem, I'm not going to teach you how to do pranayama first. I'm going to teach you how to do this relaxation response if you're physical body, how to quiet down, get your chitta vritti nirodha before you can do any of the breathing technique. Thank you for asking that question. It's a wonderful question. Um, thank you. Thank you okay. So we have to, I think we have up to 15 minutes. It's up to 8.15? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, we're 15 uh, minutes. Let's talk, you know. I love uh, to talk. Sure. Uh, uh, there are just two more things. I'm going to share a slide because someone's asking if you have a book on yoga therapy, and I actually have that here too, so I can just put that up so everyone can see. My book on yoga therapy. Didn't they show you my book on yoga therapy? It's here somewhere on my table. I have it's a called yoga. Also. Uh, you have the book Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you know, this is in, in Amazon. It's doing very well. You just put my name, Dilip Sarkar. It'll come up. But the book is, remember, there is no book like this in the market. It's a yoga therapy, Ayurveda, and Western medicine. And the title is called your, the, the integration of the, of, the, of the three healthcare modalities all together. So even, you see, when you do this yoga therapy, then you say, now it is a turn to do a Ayurvedic dinocharya. Get up in the morning between four to six, sit down in a malasana. We sit down, we learn, 
So I said, I cannot sit down. So you don't have to. Just try where you are and slowly and slowly you will see. I was a surgeon. I was operating like this. You know, I have a stiff neck, stiff back. I was like a stick. But today, Jessica has seen me and all of us seen me. I'm like a rubber band. You know, you can, you name us and I can do it. And I, oh, you had so many problems. Don't do a headstand. You know, don't do, don't do anything. Take some pills and start digging your grave. You know, it'll be great. I have no restriction when you listen to your body signal. When you listen to your introspection, listen to the doctor within you, you will absolutely have no issue at all. Thank you. <laughs> so you have my book you now, just to show your book. To, I, I have it here on my desk somewhere, but, but anyway, it's, it is in Amazon and people who are watching it, you can just, just Google it, Amazon, the, Dilip Sarkar, it'll all come up. Okay, what's next? Um, so there are a couple of people asking um, if you how to get enrolled specifically in your yoga treatment. Um, oh program. my God! You know, I have a I saw a movie and I love the name of the movie. You know, the movie is called Catch Me If You Can. You know, you have to catch me. <laughs> no, I just no, I do it actually now. I'm better because now we are all home because of pandemic. Saturday morning, 9.30, I do it through Facebook, Facebook live class. So if you want to join, send me a, a friend's request. And Fridays, actually, I'm very, very well connected with India now. And I'm from Bengal, so I do a class in Bengal. And then I do a twice a year called a continuing medical education, CME program, which we just finished one they're called in the septa, you know, May uh, 22nd and 23rd. So next one is a September 11 and 12. And you can join uh, our uh, continuing medical education. Then I'm presenting <laughs> throughout the <laughs> every, every weekend, every day. Yesterday I had a four, four, four Zoom meeting. So actually these days, and I was never comfortable, but now with people like Jessica and others, you know, we are all in a, a Facebook and other social media. So uh, all the information is there. You know, if you really, if you, if you want to catch me, you'll be able to catch me very easily these days. Before or not in social media, it's a hard time for you to catch me. You know, so thank you, thank you for asking. You were very generous. You have the live Facebook classes, your YouTube channel. <laughs> oh yes, I oh that's another thing. Jessica, I have a YouTube channel. You can go to the Leap Sarkar Yoga, and every disease you can think about is there. If you talk about yoga therapy for asthma, yoga therapy for diabetes, any any known chronic diseases, it's all there. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. Um, there are two other questions. Um, one is by Arun, um, is neuroplasticity a response of relaxation and an increase in parasympathetic tone or some other effect of yogasana and meditation? No, neuroplasticity is your, the, input specific. A relaxation response is a part of a neuroplasticity means that today you cannot sit down in a grounding posture. You don't have to, okay? Or, or you cannot even bend. So now what you are doing, you are supporting yourself. You're doing a forward bend and you stay here, <clears throat> close your eyes, and you start your breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. Slowly and slowly you will say, this thing is going to happen. And slowly it will happen. It will happen because even, see when I'm sitting on this chair, and this is my chair, I don't know if I can show it to you. It's a fascinating chair. This is called your kneeling chair. I always sit down in a kneeling chair. In a kneeling chair, you always keep your spine straight. So. In my skeleton, my skeleton is a, a, a going to fall in the front because the head is so heavy. So all my muscles are contracting to keep me straight. Okay, now answering to that, what is neuroplasticity say? Let me give another example. I tell people you should drink a glass of water before going to bed and put a little oil inside your nostril, you'll sleep better. We sleep through our nostrils. So I cannot drink water because I have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. 
I said, fine. Drink half a glass of water so you don't have to get up at night. Continue 40 inputs, 30, 40 inputs. Continue for a month or six weeks. Increase it to three fourths now. You will see that's another neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity will set in. Now you can drink about three fourth glass of water without going to the bathroom. Essentially, we'll still be able to drink a full glass of water without going to the bathroom. So trying to answer your question is that it is not the relaxation response, is not the parasympathetic, you know, the activation. That is a part of your practice, but it is a repetitive process. And the interesting is neuroplasticity is person specific. It may happen to for Jessica within a three input. It may happen to me for about 300 input. So I have, I can give an example. I have a world famous a yoga teacher. She came and told me, took her 10 years to learn to do a headstand. She said, and I have people in my class who has done in the two days or three days on their own. See, in whole yoga therapy practice, you have to remember one thing. You don't do any adjustment. You don't even touch the person. You know, you tell them, this is your final, this is your Padmasa, Lotus position. You can really come, but it has to come from within you. The doctor within you has to decide what is right for you. And that is actually, that is the reason the yoga therapy programs are 800 hours, 1000 hours, 1500 hours, you know. Normal yoga teacher is what? 200 hours, 200 hours yoga teacher's training, but yoga therapy is 800 hours. Understanding these and able to use it in the clinical setup. Yeah. And if you're a physician, it's great. We Jessica understand because I talk to her all the time that when you're a physician, what happens? Every asanas, every pranayama, you feel the physiological changes within you. It's a wonderful practice. And it just transforms your whole existence. Exactly. Total transformation. And this is called, yoga therapy is called the art of transformation. Thank you. Um, there is, speaking of doctors, there is one last question. I know just for the sake of time, there are a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. If anyone else has questions, um, we can find a way to get them answered for you. Um, so there's just, I would like to ask, um, so you had mentioned in your presentation about yoga therapy in the University of Maryland and how everyone who graduates from there will get a job because there's just such a demand. Um, there is a question asking, uh, what would the first step for a yoga therapist be to approach doctors in Western medicine, especially if some of them aren't as familiar with yoga in the true authentic sense? And the second part of that is, um, do you believe, and I do believe that that's why one of the reasons I enrolled in Bayou, once you get the education and the master's degree, it gives you even more authenticity, credibility, and knowledge to help yourself and others. You know, answer is very simple. What yoga says, you cannot change anybody, but you can change yourself. Mm -hmm. Next one says, if you change yourself, people around you started to change you. So the, my approach is all the physicians, you know, we call it the, you know, the non-believers is fine. I keep on doing it. I keep on teaching. I've been the same town for the last 45 years. And I have hundreds and hundreds of people who got better. Now I can tell you one thing, the security physician will understand this. Any person who comes to my class, now I'm in, I'm, now I'm in you know, the uh, virtual class, but on my physical class person comes, I know they have underlying medical condition. If a physician comes to my class, I have a large number of physicians who comes to my class, who comes to my, I know exactly why they're there. The reason the physician in my class is a failure of pharmaceutical support. See, they have been brainwashed by their pharmaceutical company that if you take this medication, it will help you. So we call them called the pharmacomafias. Pharmacomafias are controlling. But eventually what happens, a medication works through either a blocking an enzyme or blocking a receptors, but our body is so smart. Body is so smart, it tries to find the pathway around it. So remember after a while, 
<laughs> my medication doesn't work anymore. So you get a new antihypertensive medication, new pain medication. So trying, as I said again, please do not contradict. You became a silent observer. You keep on doing it. People around you will start doing it. Like I say, I have all the parents. I want my children to do you. It's a very simple. So what? You start doing it. I have a physician comes to me. He says, I want to incorporate yoga therapy in my practice. How to do it? Simple. You start doing it first. You feel within yourself, then you will be able to share. And yoga therapy, remember, as a yoga therapy teaching, it is the sharing your own practice. If you don't do a practice, you cannot be a teacher. And that's true. As simple as it is. You cannot change yourself, but you can change, you know, you cannot change, change anybody, but you can change yourself. And the whole world will change around you. And you can only share what you have to give. You can't. Share. Yes, but, but actually you share what is within you. You know, what is, you know, like I have seen autistic children. I have, oh, it's amazing. Their parent comes and says, you know what? The day I was doing with him, he, he, he looks so good. He looks so better. I said, why don't you do it every day with him? You know? <laughs> he said, the day I was doing with him. I said, why do, what does it mean by day? Yoga therapy practice is a daily practice. It's a part of your lifestyle. It is part of your dinocharya. It's a part of your yogic daily lifestyle. That's the way you get the benefit out of it. Yep, you're, you're popping a pill every day. Do you know at the age of 70 in the United States, average they take eight to 10 pills per day? Can I, get, I have no idea. $350 billion industry called pharmacomafias, huh? They're controlling you. So I said, do a daily yoga practice, as simple as it is. Wow. You know, ask me, I'll come, I'll come and do more, more presentation, practice, you know, I just, because. You remember one thing, the moment you get out of this program, any, you'll be bombarded with the patients. Anybody comes to your class or your setup will have underlying medical condition. And it takes time as a physician also, you know, like you, are, you have been, you know, realizing it as a physician to incorporate this yoga therapy in your practice and life. So it took some time. It doesn't happen overnight. That is called the art of transformation. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're getting towards the time now. Hmm? Yeah. Um, I thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar. Um, I just wanted to ask if anyone had any final questions, um, especially related to Vayu. And I'm just going to share just this, sorry, one slide. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please send your email to apply at vayu.usa. Or if there are any questions specifically for Vayu, Ah, okay, so Amitha had a final, can we have a quick practice session as the doctor had mentioned? <laughs> um, I know what, we're, what, what she was that? for a quick practice session today, as the, as you had mentioned earlier during the talk, doing a quick practice. Yeah, yeah, all this, you know, practice, put your hand in the bag, do a Pashim Namaskar, okay? As simple as it is, you know, you can, you can, you can see me. Just come back slowly. Put your hands here as a Paschim Namaskar. Sitting in a chair and just stay here. Mm -hmm. But don't push yourself. Don't go into the pain, short of pain. Just breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. There are four postures for Brahma Mudra. Put your neck to the back. And breathing out, breathe out with a Brahmri Pranayam. Mm -hmm. So extending your exhalation, exhalation parasympathetic, same thing you do, both sides, right, left, back, front, and your hand is in the back. You are, see, muscle cannot stay contracted too long. Asanas have a three stage. One is called arumbho, is the beginning. Then it's called sthiti. Sthiti means the muscle starts to relax. It has a fasciculation. The fasciculation goes away. 
Finally, it's called a Visharjan. See, my hand is there. My hand is way high up. Pushchim Namaskar, Brahma Mudra, with a Brahmri Pranayam. What do you call a Western medicine? Money back guarantee. You're going to have a you're going to have a parasympathetic activation, and parasympathetic activation, your blood sugar will come down. See, see how simple it is. Western medicine, diabetes is a receptor problem, enzyme problem. You can say diabetes, body cannot digest sugar. You need to improve your digestive power. What is digestive power? A parasympathetic activation. You know parasympathetic call? Calm and digest. Sympathetic is called fright and flight. So here I am in my parasympathetic activation. I have my proper digestion. I sleep well. You know the sign of health in yoga? Looking at a baby, you know, you know, healthy baby is they eat, poop, and sleep. Strong digestion, easy elimination, good night's sleep. You don't need your cardiac stress test, you don't need your mammogram, you don't nothing. But you know what we do? Every year we go for a checkup, and your doctor says, Wow, everything looks good. You know, I don't know what you are doing. Keep on doing what you are doing. Your your blood, blood work looks good, everything looks good. Because most of the Western physician, you know, you remember, they don't they have no understanding what this relaxation response is. So be simple practice. Or breathe out longer than breathing in throughout the whole day. See what happens if you do simply count of two in and count of four out. Normal breathing rate is or 15 to 16. Two seconds in, four seconds out, a baby can do it. See, you are already reducing a breathing rate to 10. Three seconds in, six seconds out, already reducing to seven. And then if you keep on doing it, neuroplasticity sets in, you sleep like, in, you breathe like this and sleeping. And my wife tells me all the time, that's how you breathe. And in the animal world, you have seen animal who breeds less number, they live longer. Hmm? Turtle lives 300, 400 years, a dog lives up to 20 years. So as simple practices like yoga therapy. So neuroplasticity is, neuroplasticity is the underlying mechanism for yoga therapy. So much. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and good night, I, good night time. Good night time. Oh, no, yeah. it's just amazing. The breath is just a tool that we're not, most of us are not conscious of all the time. So it's such simple, beautiful, like evergreen advice. See, the, the breath is both your voluntary and involuntary. You know, I can take a deep breath in, but I'm sleeping, I'm breathing. So, so when I'm trying, you know, you understand this function of your cortex. And when I'm sleeping, it's a function of my brainstem. This is conscious, this is subconscious. So breath is a connector between a body and mind. So say, literally, if you're flying a kite, the roller is your body, the kite is your mind, and the thread which connects your breath. Your breath connects your body and mind. Breath connects your, you know, brainstem to your cortex. A simple way of saying, you know, a, a simple word of saying. And same as a blinking, you know, the eyes, that's why the trathak is so powerful. Blinking is both voluntary and involuntary function. Actually, the whole yoga therapy, the yogic, what happened in the yogic kriyas, they have a voluntary control over involuntary function. That's what yoga therapy is. So we call it medically, we call it a controlling your autonomic nervous system. Okay, time to say goodbye. Or... Oh, well, thank you so much again. I can, I can continue conversation and yeah, yeah. whole night, whole, whole night. I can do whole night, whole night, you know, whole night is for me. No. <laughs> Yeah, no, you make the time. Thank you so much, um, everyone. Thank you so much for staying a few minutes. As you can see, Dr. Sirkar's energy is just Zoom in person. It doesn't matter. It goes everywhere um, because it's from within. Thank you so much. It's called, um, it's called well, what, what do you call energizer battery, you know? Oh, yes. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but that's living life, truly. Um, so I just want to uh, say thank you again. And I'm just... Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niram bhaya 
Sarve bhadrani bhashantu makashe dukha bhagavet Om Shanti 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 May all be happy, may all be free from illness, may all see what is auspicious, and may no one suffer. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you, everyone.